three, two, one. Here we go. Welcome to Lighthouse Live with Jordan Devitt, the show where we give God the glory from this generation to the next. And now to your host, Jordan Devitt. Good morning and welcome back to Lighthouse Live. I'm your host, Jordan Devitt, and I'm so glad that you join me today. Before I do anything, I want to thank Pastor Dan, the senior uh, bishop, actually now, of this house, and Pastor Garland, the senior pastor here at the Lighthouse Church of All Nations. I love you, I honor you, and I'm so grateful for all that you've done in making this possible. I want to ask you right now just to share this program so that somebody can hear the message of the gospel ministered today. So I'm going to jump right in. This morning, I want to talk to you all about unity in the body of Christ. I believe it is one of the most powerful weapons that the church has in its arsenal when it is used correctly. You know, there's so many little things that we find ourselves just being divisive through um, little matters that don't really mean much, and the enemy is using it to cause discord against the believers. And so that is why I believe today it's so important when we see unity displayed in the correct manner, how powerful we can be in the national church, um, but also in our own ministries when unity is used the correct way. So My first point is, on our own, we can never accomplish what God is asking. Matthew 18, 20 says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. You see, God always uses a team to accomplish his will. One person has the ability to do the work for God's kingdom, but a team together is unstoppable. God wants his kingdom to be able to spread like wildfire. And in that being said, that means that everything needs to be caught on fire. So there must be more than just one. One person can only do so much. I mean, where do we ever see that it's only one person that does everything? It's always one person may get an assignment, but it takes many others to be able to fulfill that very thing. One person may get the vision, but then it takes a people to be able to accomplish and to fulfill that particular vision. You know, for example, Jesus had the disciples to be able to accomplish that particular vision of what God had him to do. You know, I've been watching uh, The Chosen. It's an amazing TV show right now on the life of Jesus and just the gospel. And they were showing Jesus as he fed the 5,000. And it was so amazing because the way they depicted it was Jesus, you know, back then, obviously, they didn't have microphones or, or they didn't have ways of being able to speak to that many people where all people could hear it clearly. And so Jesus was speaking, right? And there's, of course, 5,000 people. So it's so many people out in this field. And there was disciples split up in multiple different sections. So when Jesus would say something, then there'd be another disciple 50 feet away who would say that exact same thing to the people around there. And then 50 feet further out, there'd be another disciple standing there to be able to speak to the people further out and so on and so forth. And so the reason that I give you this and show you this is because when unity is used in the right manner, the kingdom is unstoppable. Esther had Mordecai, Moses had Joshua, so many people working together to fulfill the vision that God has given. And today, I want to help you to understand that unity used the right way is unstoppable. I remember the other day I was sitting in a Waffle House And there were so many things going on with the staff there. One person was cooking the waffles, one person making the bacon, one person 
cooking the eggs, one person making the potatoes. There was people doing all different jobs, a cashier and people who were serving the tables. And every person had a specific function. But as they collectively worked together, they were able to fulfill the mission of serving all of the people, even in the midst of it being rush, uh, rush hour and just so many people coming in, wanting to eat. And not only that, but there were even people who were in the back that you could see who were doing dishes and some even prepping food that were part of the team. But every single person had a significant role. And it reminded me of the scripture, 1 Corinthians 12, 14 through 16, says this, the body is made up of many parts, but each part must play their role to be effective. So it says this, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. You see, it wouldn't make any sense for someone to not think that they're valuable. And that's why I love how Paul gives us this description. Imagine if we were to just, let's just say, chop off one of our hands because we don't think it's as significant as an ear or as the mouth. Well, we would end up as a body not being able to do what we need to do. You need the hand. Or maybe poke out an eye because it's not the nose. Well, that wouldn't make any sense either because the eye has a job just as important that helps the nose. And they work together collectively. You see, every single part of a body has a specific role. And although we may think, well, that role is more significant, it really isn't according to the Bible. Every part means something. And so you today, you actually mean something in the body of Christ. And you may think, well, I'm not as significant. Well, in my body, I would not cut off any part nor allow any part to be defective because it has a specific purpose in accomplishing what my body needs to do. And neither would any person So then why sometimes do we feel like this? Why sometimes do we allow ourselves to think that someone or something is less significant? According to the Bible, it is not. We are not. And when we do that, there's a hindrance that we're putting on the work that God needs to be accomplished. There has to be people willing to do any job to make everything work for the kingdom of God the way that it's supposed to. It is inevitable. Every single part, every single person needs to play their role so that we can be effective in ministry the way that God calls. Now, John 14 and 12 shows us what I'm talking about in a very profound way. And it says this, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. They will do even greater than things than these because I'm going to the Father. Now, the first question we must ask is, how, how is this possible that people would be able to do greater works than the works that Jesus was doing? Well, the reason for that is because Jesus' ministry was only three years. And each person was going to be given the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And so because of that, people were going to be able to do so much more work in ministry because the compound effect, the multiplication effect. You see, how many people were reached during Jesus' time? Of course, many, but imagine now how many people there are 
who know the gospel, who are preaching the gospel, who have ministries for 20 years, who have ministries for 30 years, who have ministries for 50 years, who have teams of 100 people, who have teams of 5,000 people working together to reach people with the message of the gospel. You see, there is a power in unity. There's a power in people working together for God's kingdom. There's a power when people do all that God is asking them to do collectively. But I'm here to tell you this morning that it's so crucial that as the kingdom advances, we use each other to make the mission be fulfilled. It's crucial. We need each other. We need to be able to depend on each other and lean on each other to do all that God is asking for us to do. My second thing I wanna give you all is unity being displayed. Exodus 36 and three is a great story um, and scenario of unity being displayed. It says this, they received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded to be done. And it says, then Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering to the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because what they had, they already had was more than enough to do all the work. Oh, I love this story because this is actually how God intends for unity to look inside the church, inside our ministries, inside our lives. When everyone helped and when everyone listened to the vision that God gave Moses, the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, had so much that people were bringing that Moses actually had to say, hold up, we have, we have to stop this because we have too much. That is what God wants in the church today. God wants it to be so much that people are helping that we actually don't even, we could shut it down and be like, hey, we don't need any more. We have so many people who are willing. And every person had a different task. Every person had a different assignment. Listen, I want to press in on this this morning because I believe that we can be so effective when we hear what God's word says on unity. Nothing is, it's nothing is impossible. Every person did their job. Some people brought the wood. Some people put the wood together. Some people brought the linen. Some people put the linen together. Some people brought the animals, the food. Some people made the, it was every single person working together collectively so that the mission could be accomplished. And so that is why I say this this morning to you, that unity displayed is so powerful. And this is where we should see our ministries going in the direction of. Why do we think that the enemy loves to use minuscule matters so much? to cause division. Oh, this person thinks that way. This person thinks that way. This person does this that way. And so it's all divided. Denomination and, and beliefs and, and the way that people dress and the way that people talk and the way that people, it's, it's all division. The, what, what people believe politically, what people don't believe. I mean, that's all the enemy uses. He wants us to be divided. I cannot emphasize this enough today. He wants us to be divided. Because, hear me now, this is the Bible. The Bible says a house divided against itself cannot stand. 
You see, here in America, I'm gonna take this for instance. Here in America, America has been a very powerful nation in the world um, for a long time. A nation, though, does not fall that's that powerful, but if on the inside it implodes. And the reason for that is actually highly correlated to the health of even just our family lives, right? Because our family lives are only as strong, or or, our government and our nation is only really as strong as the family life. Now, what do we see happening in our family lives today? You see divorce, highest rates, children rebelling against parents. All these things are out of whack. Parents leaving the kids. I mean, it, so many different factors and things that are destroying the nation. And that is how implosion takes place. Within, on the inside, chaos, stirring. And so what ends up happening is you see people just fighting, 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 fighting. No one working together. And it causes everything to just fall and collapse. I'm here to tell you this morning that Satan is using us against each other to break everyone down. That is why we have to catch this concept. That is why we have to hear this message because when we work together, there is nothing that we cannot accomplish for God. Nothing. Nothing is impossible when we work together. We have to learn how to work together, how to drop ego, how to drop pride, how to drop things that would make us want to be so divided. And I'm guilty of this myself. But it's learning how to be just humble in things and saying, you know what? I'm willing to drop this so that we can fulfill what God's calling us to do. I'm telling you this morning, we've got to bring back unity and the church in our ministries, in our homes, working together, not against each other. The enemy knows what he's doing. And when we do this, I'm telling you, nothing is impossible. You know, just recently, I know a lot of people have been hearing about the Asbury Revival, and it was such a glorious thing to get to go and experience. I mean, as I stepped foot in that town and just was in the town, you could feel the tangible presence of God. It was, I mean, even now, it was so glorious. When I went there, the spirit of unity and order were so strong, it was inevitable that God was gonna show up and that he'd shown up. I went there and there was a line with probably at least 5,000 people. 5,000 people waiting outside in 25 degree weather to get inside of that chapel and there was so much unity. I mean, they had people who set up these gas lit uh, heaters outside for the people all the way down blocks away from the school. There were people in churches partnering together, bringing food for free to give out to the community as people waited in line and waited to get inside that revival for free. 
There were people who were uh, lined up singing. They had groups of three singing for hours. You got to remember, this is 24-7. So they had just three young adults singing, singing and singing and singing and singing and singing. I mean, for two, three hours straight to bring revival. And then they had a couple of leaders who would give brief impartations. I'm here to tell you that that would never, never take place if there was not a spirit of unity. It would collapse so fast if there was not a spirit of unity. Even the people going, there was unity. People were going from all different denominations, all different denominations, to go and experience this breakout of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because when there's unity, God blesses. When, when there's a unity that's taking place, God blesses that very thing. He puts his hand on it. And in that small little university, people traveled from outside of the country to go experience a move of God that was backed by unity. Tell me that unity does not have such power in the body of Christ today. I'm here to tell you this morning that whatever you're doing, wherever you're at, whatever your assignment is for the kingdom, when we work together, we are unstoppable. We're unstoppable. I'm going to pray in a minute, but I want to go over my points one more time to you all so you could take this with you and that you could receive this impartation this morning. Number one is this. It's this. On our own, we can never accomplish what God is asking. Of course, people may be able to do certain things and have an effect, but with people, there's so much power behind it. God may give a vision to a person, but he needs a people to fulfill it. He needs a people, people working together, people supporting it, people doing different jobs. You see, if there weren't people who were sowing into Jesus' ministry, the ministry would have just, it wouldn't have been able to keep going. If there weren't other people who were helping, it wouldn't have been able to keep going. There had to be different facets to be able to accomplish that very thing that God called for Jesus to accomplish. And that was people, right? Number two is this, unity being displayed. When unity is displayed the right way, every single thing gets blessed. Everything. There's always going to be so much that takes place when unity is displayed. You know, with Moses, with Aaron working with Moses, with Mordecai and Esther and, and all these people because unity being displayed. And then number three is this. God is not concerned with little issues. He doesn't, we don't have to uh, be fighting over every little thing. God just wants us to work together, drop the egos and the barriers and the walls, love each other, work together, and accomplish his will. A house divided against itself cannot stand. We need each other. It's so important. And then the last thing is this, you know, our body is made up of many parts, but it's still, every single part matters. I would not cut off my hand because I need my hand. So whatever you're doing today, wherever you're at, 
you're important in the body, you're needed, we need you so deeply, we love your work so much, no matter what it is, and when we work together, there is nothing, nothing that can get in the way of advancing God's kingdom. I just want to pray with you all right now. Father, I just thank you for every person who's joined today. I pray that you would bless them, God, that you would use them, that you would keep them. You would touch their mind, their hearts, their spirit, Lord, and help them to see that they play a great role in advancing God's kingdom today. Father, I just ask that you would just use them for your glory. Help us, God, to be a church that works together. In Jesus' name, amen. Have an amazing day. God bless you all. Get your new book from Pastor Dan Willis, The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration. For over 40 years, Pastor Dan Willis has led a growing multicultural church community in the suburbs of Chicago. His insight, wisdom, and overall love for people are sure to bless and empower your ministry. Order your copy of The Multicultural Church, Embracing Unity and Restoration today. Log on to www.danwillis.org today and take your ministry to the next level.